Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Um, Alex, that's Kirby. Today we're going to talk about recent news with Silicon Valley Bank and how they've collapsed. The second largest bank to collapse since Lehman Brothers. So Kirby, what's your experience since you've been around for, you know, quite a few decades? <laughs> yeah, I've been around decades. Um, the first thing people want to correlate this to, and it goes to the fact of, of course, clickbait. And then, yes, this is the second largest bank in U.S. history to collapse, you know, right right around, you know, the financial crisis, you know, the Lehman Brothers and things like that. Um, but it's clickbait to put people in fear mode, of course, to make it click. Uh, yes, it is the second largest bank. Um, yes, it did fall intent and purposes collapse. Uh, and it collapsed because of certain elements but understand it's a niche bank i mean it operated like a regular bank you know they had individuals and companies that hold, held accounts in there just like every other you know bank across the united states that have a personal and business account uh the thing is this bank in particular focused on startups you know like tech startups and people that just started a company and it's company and businesses that fall into the purposes when you first start now you're not generating profits, you're generating revenue. So this is just the niche that it was in. Nothing wrong with being in this niche, but it's some underlying factors which cause this. And it wasn't the fact that, oh, they was, you know, in the, you know, the IPO sector, the, you know, startup sector, which caused the collapse. Some people think that's what it is. The issue is, the issue that happened with this bank is something that could happen with any bank. It's not unique to this bank, but what happened with this bank in particular is they took a large amount of their deposits, some somewhere over one point five billion. I'm just gonna say over one point five billion. I believe it's one point nine, but over one point five billion. In in late 2021, they bought ten year treasuries. They bought ten year treasuries, and of course. They had to hold it for a four to six month, I mean, a four to six year time frame. The thing that happened is when they put that money by 10 year treasuries at that point in time, if interest rates rose after that, that would be bad for the bank. And as we know through history now, 2022, that from 2022 to present, this has been the highest interest rate movement uptick by the Federal Reserve in history, the fastest, you know, speed that they went in. So that went against their position on buying all those treasuries because as interest rates go up, the price of the asset goes down. So what, so just that alone did not cause the bank to collapse. What caused the bank to collapse is all banks use fractional, uh, fractional lending. Meaning if you give a bank a thousand dollars, they can lend out $900 of it, just only keeping 10% of what you deposited. And then their goal and hope is that more people will deposit money. So if you have to come in and take your $1,000 out, they will have money and deposits from other people just to pay you your $1,000, but they lend out your portion of the money. So again, this bank working in the IPO sector, working in the tech startup sector, and if you look at the IPO market, it's been dry as the desert since... 2021. And then so there's no new funds going into the bank. You know, interest rates have been rising. So those banks have been, those startup companies have been using that money to, you know, pay higher loans and things of that nature. So it wasn't new money going into the bank as far as deposits. And then there was, you know, a run on the bank where more run on the bank, meaning these companies and individuals was taking out more money because inflation is higher, things cost more, so it costs more for them to operate. So they're taking out more money than usual. And it's not a fault on the companies for taking out, it's their money. They took it out, they was taking out more money than usual to, you know, handle payroll, handle uh, purchases and things like that. You can even look at the real estate market. Lumber went up, you know, six, seven X and things like that. So cost of everything were higher, so companies needed more money. The problem was it wasn't new deposits going to Silicon Valley Bank. And then the money that they had of individual people that was in there was stuck in the 10-year treasury for a four to six-year period. Interest rates rose, and then they needed to take that money out of the 10-year treasuries. And 
So when they put it in, interest rates was at 1.73%. When they took it out, it was at like four, almost close to 4%. So the value of the asset dropped. So when they had to take the money out to satisfy the customers for the withdrawals that they was taking out the bank, they took a hit and a big loss on the amount of money that uh, when they took out the asset, it's just like buying a stock, the stock dropping, and you got to sell it to go pay for a house. If you put it in at hundred dollars and the price of the stock dropped down to 70, $77, then the total amount of money you have to put on the house is less. So then with that, the bank was looking to way to short their balance sheet, you know, looking to sell off percentages of the company to set up their balance sheet. And then that caused mass hysteria that caused mass hysteria. And then everybody went to the bank trying to get all their money out. And then within 48 hours, the FDIC came in and took the, took the bank from them. Man, this is like the first instance that uh, I guess I'm hearing about as a adult or whatever, because I know this similar situations happen in the recession, but for instance, like in this scenario or scenarios like this, can the bank recover or is it just it's shut down and it's history? Uh, well, of course, everybody want to push this to the financial crisis. It's not like the financial crisis. It does has another uh, it does have has another relevance to history, but not the 08 financial crisis. Um, the It's up to the Federal Reserve what's going to happen to the bank, because the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell and them, they control all the you know, banks, that's truly banks, FDIC secured. Could the government come, I mean, could the Fed come in and bail out the bank and say it's too big to fail? Yes. Will they? Time will tell. Um, if they let it collapse like Lehman Brothers, then it collapse like Lehman Brothers. Um, but this has more correlation to the 1980s, the savings and loans crisis. The savings and loans crisis, and the same exact thing happened. Interest rates, Paul Broker raise interest rates uh, fast. People was like, well, the bank's only giving me X amount of interest rate and I can get a higher interest rate putting my money in a money market account. So people start making a run on the bank trying to take their money out of the you know, savings and loans bank to put it in money market accounts because they got a higher interest rate. Because it's fractional lending, there was no new deposits going to the bank. So the banks had to, the banks didn't have enough capital to satisfy the customers. That's when, you know, the FDIC came out with, you know, $250 per account. We will ensure to guarantee that people have their money. But that savings and loans crisis went over like a 10 year span in the 80s, early 80s to the mid 80s. That that part went over. But that's kind of the relevance. It's not like the financial crisis where all the banks were sitting there and, uh, you know, in the house, well, most banks were sitting there in the housing markets that was doing the CDS uh, investments and things like that. This was really a niche market. Could other banks go through this? Because, I mean, there's other like regional banks in California that people are doing runs on the bank also. But could this happen to a bigger institution like the JP Morgan's, the Bank of America, things like that? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible if it's just a mad flood and everybody make a run on the bank. It's possible. Is it likely? Uh, I don't think so because the bank's the bigger banks are more capitalized. They didn't make the, they they didn't go, really, that's what Silicon uh, Valley Bank, all in, all in on this one, uh, you know, bet on the interest rates not going, you know, not going higher. Not saying that they, you know, put all the, the clients' deposits in there, but they made that one bad bet and, and it's, and it hurt them. And banks was looking, but besides, you know, that part that part of it, will the bank survive? Which I don't care. I care more about the companies and the people who got their money in the bank. And that's that's something that people should worry about. Yeah, and like for a new investor, um someone who is investing in the stock market, they're just starting out and they see this and maybe they've heard, you know, you should take uh advantage of opportunities. Is this an opportunity? Or is it not in a scenario like this? Because I, I noticed the stock is still on the stock market. But is that a wise opportunity to take advantage while the stock is down? Maybe like Bank of America, the way you did in the recession? Or is this a bank to avoid uh, from an investor standpoint? This is a bank to avoid. This avoid it. 
run far, far, far away. Um, the reason why is because the trust will never be there. The trust will never be there. Bank of Bank of America, um, that scenario, this is like a one-off event, right? So it's only isolated to this bank in particular. I mean, I think it had four branches across the United States. I mean, it was huge though. The bank was huge. It did a lot of a lot of numbers. I was looking it up uh, last night. They had over three hundred and fifty-four billion dollars in deposits. So they was it was pushing numbers. Uh, but the the scenario with me and Bank of America was all the banks was in the same scenario. I mean, in the same situation, banks got bailed out, you know, with government funds. But that was already already established that this is what happened. I didn't go jump in. Oh, the banks are collapsing. Let me go just go buy some banks right now. So that it collapsed. It was a lot of other steps that happened. The Federal Reserve came in and stepped in. The banks were too big to fail. We're going to uh, spend money to uh, keep these banks solvent. So that was already, so the Fed put was already there for the banks. But now it came to how much money will it take for the Fed to pump it to these banks? And then I let all that stuff or most of that stuff play out before, you know, because again, people lost confidence in the banking sector for a long time. I mean, if you look, Bank of America was hanging down there in the sub 20s, even got down there to the sub 10s for years. It wasn't a, just a, a bounce back. And I mean, for this particular bank here, I would stay 100,000 feet away because I mean, and you know how I am about uh, governance and how people operate. And of course, they'll need a new CEO. But before two days before it was announced that the bank needed to shore up their funds, the CEO cash out $3.5 million of stock. So I don't, I mean, you know how I am about uh, stuff that perceived shady by a CEO. I don't, I don't mess around with that at all. Yeah, I did see so that. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's the thing that, but no, I'll stay far away from it. Far away. Is this something that could have been foreseen from uh, investors, maybe like paying attention to the company's earning reports? Is that something that uh, an experienced investor could have seen coming. Well, that's well. The thing was, that's how it was. That's how it was seen. It was seen because somebody was looking. I mean, they had an earnings call, and then you know, people looked on the balance sheet and mm -hmm. it saw where the money was allocated at, or the financial statements are seen where the money was allocated at, and then it just dominoed from there. Um, again, the 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 biggest part for me. The bank is a bank. It's a business that did that. I mean, I'm more worried about their customers. I mean, this is a financial institution that was holding funds for banks, was holding funds for companies, was holding funds for individuals. Um, and with that, companies need that money to pay payroll, to pay vendors. You know, so... Now this money, their money is locked up in this bank. How are they gonna pay their employees? Uh, Roku came out and said twenty six percent of their cash reserves was sitting in this bank. Twenty six percent. So if you do the math, FDIC only secures or insures two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. These bank accounts had way more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in there. Now I'm gonna give you a shocking number. Of the accounts, of all the accounts that this company held, only 2.7% of the accounts had less than $250,000. 93% or 97% of their accounts had more than $250,000 in there. So the question should be, the question is, what happens to all the excess? And I looked on the company's financial uh, report. They was holding... Three hundred and fifty-four billion, with a B, dollars of deposits in that bank. So, will the companies ever get back the money? What will the Feds do? Uh, Federal Reserve do? That is the big question because a lot of the companies, all of their cash was in this bank. They got payroll and everything else. How are they going to do it? It was some, you know, you saw the interview on CNN and things like that, where you know. I did an investor or their you know seed investor was smart enough to call them and say, hurry up and take the money out. And they got the money out just in time before the bank was shut down by the uh, FDIC. But 
for most people in most banks, I mean, most people in most companies, they didn't get their money up. And FDIC said that people should, people with of the sort of $250,000 in the account, they will get that off the, off the web. Uh, they should get that fairly soon. So this is the weekend. So I say another two or three days, Monday by Wednesday of next week, they should have the $250,000. But the question comes in, what happens to every penny over $250,000? When will they get that back? You know, they're in reservership, so they have to figure out how to do all of this stuff. Will it be a pennies on a dollar thing? Will it be, a you know, the Fed step in and save the bank and do all that? That's the biggest question that's going on. It's, it's crazy that, I mean, it still can happen, especially after the financial crisis, stuff like that can happen. But yeah. But it, it, but it all comes all three times, the savings and loans crisis, the financial crisis, and this all comes from the same thing. Banks use customers' deposits to make risky bets. That's what it all comes from. Savings and loans, same thing. They made risky bets. Financial crisis came in, made risky bets on bad loans, and then now this. I mean, yeah, they invested in the U.S. Treasury, but you made an investment that said if the interest rates, and we had historical lows. So what's up comes down, what's down goes up. We had historical lows on the interest rate, and they made a bet or put their money into the U.S. Treasury market, betting that the interest rates wouldn't go up from there. And this is in early, I mean, late 2021. And you see what happened from 2022 to now. It's the highest uh, raise in interest rates in U.S. history over you know span of time. We went up roughly over 100% on the interest rate. Yeah, over 100% on the interest rate in that short time span when the Fed's funding. That's that's what happens. That's what happens. Well, guys, with all that being said, um, if you have any questions or thoughts on this topic, uh, leave a comment down below. Hit the like button, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.